This is the AGM-114 Hellfire. Developed by Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman, it is an air-launched missile designed to destroy armored vehicles, light bunkers, small boats, and soft targets. It is used by many nations around the world, such as the United States, the land down under, Taiwan, and the UK. It can even be launched from ships. There's much more to it than just launch platforms, so today we'll be looking at what the AGM-114 Hellfire holds. The old helicopter-launched wire-guided tow missiles just wasn't suitable for the ever-changing Soviet tank threat of the Cold War. So between 1978 and 1981, the X-AGM-114 was being tested and would be operational in 1985 with the AGM-114A. It will cost around 58,000 US dollars. To make you feel bad about inflation, that's over $1,100,000 today. The missile is being shot off the rail by a Thiokol TX-657 solid rocket booster. It can reach supersonic speeds of approximately 850 knots or 978 miles per hour, then slow down to subsonic mid-flight, giving it a range of 4 to 6 miles. The most common Hellfire is the AGM-114K and AGM-114L variants in the United States Army, with the Navy and Marines using the AGM-114M and N variant, and the US Air Force using the 114P. For now, we will be focusing on the 114K and L variants. The K, or Kilo, showed up in 1996 as the Hellfire II. It came with a larger tandem warhead and an improved laser seeker. The seeker gives it the ability to reacquire a target if the first laser lock is lost. So how does lazing and junk work? Well, the missile has its own little software that allows for the flight crew to change the laser code mid-flight, unlike most laser guided bombs that can only be changed from the ground. This is a big help for close air support if someone on the ground has a different code or to deconflict with other helicopters in the area. For example, a common laser code is 1688. That code is fed to the missile. Their onboard laser designator is set to 1687 and aiming at the target. The missile will just ignore that laser frequency, but set it to 1688 and bam. Unlike the AGM-65 Maverick laser variant, the missile can be fired without a laser lock. This is called LOWAL, or Lock On After Launch. They can laser it for an appropriate time and scoot back down and move to another position before the enemy finds their position. Other than that, it can launch with a laser lock on. This is called LOWAL, or Lock On Before Launch. The 114K laser variant has three types of flight trajectories direct, low, and high. In direct mode, the missile, once launched, will gain about 100 feet, then fly directly to the target. Think of it as the Javelin direct attack mode. However, the aircraft needs to be clear of any obstructions in front of it. For low, the missile, once launched, will fly at a low altitude, but higher than direct mode, approximately 500 feet. And in high, it will go at a much higher altitude, approximately 1,000 feet. High is used when the missile needs to clear terrain in front of the launching platform. Up next is the AGM-114L. It is guided by its millimeter wave radar that allows for safer fire and forget engagements and is useful in inclement weather. It was designed to work with the longbow radar mounted on the AH-64 Apache, but you can easily not use it at all. The co-pilot gunner can designate an area using the laser to feed range to the missile and it will launch and try to acquire the target in the general area. But for much safer engagements, the longbow radar can be used. The radar once commanded will sweep for targets such as armored vehicles and feed that information to the missile. Then shoot, swap target, shoot, wash, rinse, repeat. The pilot can do this too. But remember, Using the radar may give your position away. Same thing goes for the laser if the target is sporting a laser warning system. The radar variant has two flight trajectories, Doppler beam sharpening and direct. 
Doppler beam sharpening is automatically employed when the range is at a suitable distance. Once launched, and depending on where the aircraft is facing adjacent to the target, the missile will perform a sort of curved maneuver and then curve back onto its target. This allows for the onboard radar on the missile to process information about the target better. In its direct mode, the missile will use the standard direct trajectory once launched and fly it all the way to the target. The range has to be close for this to automatically happen. Next is the 114P. It features an improved laser seeker for high flying conditions on drones. Not much else to say about it. But now, for why you're probably here. Yes, this is the R9X, and there's not much known about it, other than it's got some knives on it in place of a warhead to minimize collateral damage, civilian casualties. Yeah, no, I, I'd rather be taken out by high explosives than this thing. The Hellfire's launch platform isn't just aircraft. It can be launched from naval vessels as well, such as the littoral combat ships with the Longbow variant. Apart from that, there are ground launchers for the Hellfires as well, for Sweden in particular, and with the United States Army's multi-mission launcher. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you might like the AGM-65 Maverick video I have as well. And be sure to like, subscribe, comment. I will see you in the next one. Stay safe.